Hi, my name is Amri Hanafi. My group members are Khairuddin, Sarifah Mukmina, Nur Ashfarina, and Nur San Sabila. We'll be presenting about Rickinston Cotton Mill Company, 1866. First, the company's background. The Kingston Cotton Mill was established in the year 1845 and complete its registration in 1846. It is a manufacturing company that deals with the spinning and selling of cotton, as well as the international trading of the same product and was located in the city of Kingston Open Hall in England. Kingston Cotton Mill is one which starts with a grand plan devised by local merchants with no real knowledge of the industry they were seeking to enter. Next, what happened to them? They overstating the value of stock in its financial statements. The manager of the Kingston Cotton Mill had been fraudulently overstating the company's profit by misrepresenting the quantities and values of the company's stock. When the company was unable to pay its obligation, the actual financial situation of the company was revealed. In the end of the Kingston Cotton Mill, on the 3rd of April 1894, it came to end. The collapse of the Kingston Cotton Mill resulted in legal action being taken against both of the company's auditors and directors. Explain how to minimize or limit the exposures to potential litigation. The first one is client acceptance and retention. Evaluate prospective clients throughout the by systematically screening clients. Auditors can spot clients who may cause a problem. This can evaluate each client to determine if the relationship should be terminated. Second is avoid business outside the auditing firm's area of expertise. Do not accept a client who auditor may not be able to properly handle. Third is obtain complete knowledge of the client's business. Auditor should contact previous auditor, bank, lawyers and also other business associate to review their financial statement, tax returns and the history of client's developments. Fourth is perform a legal review on each audit engagement. Avoid or exercise extreme care in audit of the clients that have a high degree of legal risk as indicated by such factors as lack of management integrity, dispute with the IRS, rapid turnover in key financial positions and also inadequate internal control. Net court judgment According to the ruling made by the preceding judge, Lord Justice Lopez, this established an important legal precedent with the phrase he audited is a watchdog, not a black hound, that would be used for centuries thereafter. It brought about the principle that the auditor is to perform his duty with reasonable professional care and not be a detective. The ruling was in favor of the auditor as it is reasonable for the external auditor to take the manager's certificate as prima facie evidence which is referred to specific evidence that it believes support a case or an element that needs to be proved in the case and rely on representations made by the management regarding the inventory balance and not be liable for failing to detect fraud. So for the conclusion, it is the duty of an auditor to bring to bear on the work he has to perform that skill, care, and caution which a reasonably careful, cautious auditors would use. What is a reasonable skill, care, and caution must depend on the particular circumstances of each case. An auditor is not bound to be a detective or, as was said, to approach his work with suspicion or with a foregone conclusion that there is something wrong. He is a watchdog, but not a bloodhound. He is justified in believing strike servants of the company in whom confidence is placed by the company. 
he is entitled to assume, assume that they are honest and rely upon their representations, provide he takes reasonable care. And as we know, an auditor job only gives or provides opinions. That's all from us. Thank you.